God, we're starting the recording. We welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Glory and honor to the Lord God Almighty. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We want to give a shout out. Hey, I see my kids are on today. My children, as we used to say, my children are on today. I see Wes is on and his family and Lorraine and her family. Praise God. I see Linda Barrett is on from uh, uh, central Pennsylvania. Praise God. Linda said her whole family has the flu. But we're going to believe God, Linda, for healing for you and your family today. Praise God. This is the day of deliverance and healing. Ladies and gentlemen, expect deliverance and healing today. Praise God. We see Jeep is on. Jeep from Loveland, Colorado. Hey, Jeep. We praise God for you. Hallelujah. We see our main man, Ryan Trogler, from Pennsylvania and his cut buddy, Roger Pond from Pennsylvania. We see so many others on. Praise God. I started calling names. I shouldn't have called names because when you call names, you miss somebody and then you're in trouble. But forgive me for that. Oh, praise God. Let's worship the Lord today. We serve the mighty God. We serve the mighty God. Praise God. We just worship the Lord. We just bless the Lord. We thank God. Hallelujah. We just bless the Lord with all our heart. Father God, we just praise you and worship you and honor you. Father God, we magnify your name. We lift up the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you. You are our God. You are our Savior, our Lord, and our King. We commit our hearts to you, Lord God. We fix our sight on you, Lord God. We magnify your name. Your name is above all names. Lord, we just cast every care unto you in the name of Jesus. There is no problem that you cannot solve. Lord, we just bless you and honor you and thank you. You are the almighty God. Lord God, you said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We want you to encourage your people today. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. Take over this service. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength. O oh Lord, our Redeemer. Lord, do a mighty work in the lives of your people. Father, I'm asking you today to do exceedingly abundantly above all that they can ask or think, above all that we can ask or think. We come before you, Father. We love you. We worship you. Father, forgive us of all of our sins. We have sinned against you, Lord. Every one of us has sinned and come short of your glory. But we come to you. We stand before the cross, Lord Jesus. Oh, cover us with your precious blood. Restore us. Wash us in your precious blood blood and father we thank you deliver us god we repent of all of our sins father deliver us from anything that is not of you now lord rise up in us rise up in every believer rise up like rivers of living water lord god rise up in us like rivers of living water demonstrate to your people your might and your power god Father, by your spirit, by your spirit, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. Remind your people today that they have the victory in you, Lord God. Give them the victory in you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you. We bless you. Lord, I feel fired up in the Holy Ghost today. Fire up your people, Lord God, because our trust is in you, Lord. And we know that we know that we know that we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. There is no other God. And we acknowledge you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and honor you. Now, Lord, demonstrate your power through your word. Let your word go forth today. If there's anybody in our household, in, our, in, in, in uh, the listening area, anyone online, anyone watching the, the video reviewing or recording the re, uh, reviewing the tape Lord if they're not saved I ask in the name of Jesus that you'll give them the gift of salvation that they will receive Jesus Christ by Lord by faith 
in Jesus' name, and we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the Back to Basics online church. We thank you for the online churches, God. We thank you for people all over the world, Lord God. We bless you and thank you in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God. Now guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You might say that was a long prayer, but it felt good. It came from deep down within, ladies and gentlemen, deep down within my sanctified soul. Praise God. We thank God. We thank God. We bless God. The songwriter said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In the morning, we're so glad that we are here in the land of the living, in the land of the living. God's got a plan for you, ladies and gentlemen. God has a plan for you, and he wants to do greatly, exceedingly abundantly. The scripture says he wants to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. So we praise God. We praise God. We just want you to right now, right now, just unmute your phone and give a shout out to Jesus. Just tell Jesus in your own way, Lord, I love you. Just uh, uh, un unmute your phone and say, I love you, Lord, or praise the Lord, or hallelujah. hallelujah. Say something yeah. good to the Lord. Come on, everybody, just do that. Praise God. You, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Christy Carpenter up in Idaho. Come on and bless the Lord. Praise God. Jeep girl. Praise the Lord. Roger, come on, praise the Lord. Uh, Ryan, praise the Lord. Wes, praise the Lord. Uh, Elijah, all my friends in Kenya, praise the Lord. David Carter uh, in Dubai, come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just give God some praise. Give God the praise. Let's chase the devil away. Praise God. The devil can't stand the praises. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this new day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now we ask you to mute your phones again. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mute your phones so there be no uh, interference in our recording. Thank you for cooperating with that. You know, the scripture says God inhabits our praises. It feels good to be in church today. Doesn't it feel good in church today? Hey, the chat window is open. You can put your messages in the chat window. Praise God. Uh, doesn't it feel good to just praise the Lord? Uh, Jeep girl in 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 um, Loveland, Colorado says, it feels good. She says, yes, yes, it feels good. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not in the brick and mortar building. Wish we were, but we're where God has us placed in this studio. And I'm in your home and you're in my home. And the scripture says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there is the Lord in the midst of us. So we're having church, ladies and gentlemen, the church the church is the called out assembly where two or more gather in the name of Jesus. He's in the midst. So don't get hung up on not being able to attend the brick and mortar building. Don't get hung up on that. Don't let the world try to tell you how to worship God. You can worship God in your own home. And it's good when you worship with someone else. And we come together. We're casting all of our, our burdens and problems aside and we're worshiping God. We're learning how to worship the Lord. The songwriter said a long time ago, learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus, finding more power every day. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. We're in school, ladies and gentlemen. We're in school. We're in the Holy Ghost school. The Holy Ghost is teaching us how to lean on on the Lord. As you read your Bible every day, and whenever you read your Bible, you're learning to lean on Jesus. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. Everything you need for this life is contained in this scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to read your Bible Learn how to let this word work in you. Learn everything from Genesis to Revelation. We pray that you'll be an aggressive 
fighting soldier for the Lord. Uh, uh, I used to be a Green Beret, and I had the M16, uh, but I've got a greater weapon now, and now I'm a Green Beret for Jesus. I'll go wherever he sends me behind enemy lines, and I will still do what I was trained in the military, plant an explosive behind the enemy's lines. And the explosive that I use these days is the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible. It's an explosive. An, ex an explosive. When you plant the word in somebody, that word can do great and mighty things. And then we carry a weapon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, where I used to carry an M16 years ago. Now I carry the M66. The M66 it's the most powerful weapon in the world. Well, you may say, what is the M66? Tell me, old soldier, what is the M66? Well, the M66 is a weapon that supersedes the M15. It's greater than a rocket. It's greater than the atomic bomb. The M66 is the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd King, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. That's 39 of the M66. We can just fire 39 of them and get the victory. But then we've got 27 more that make up this powerful weapon called the M66. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st uh, uh, and 2nd Timothy, Titus, uh, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. That's the M66, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah. We can fire it. You say, well, you've been reading. You were reading that from a, a cue card, Pastor Card. No, these, this, those books of the Bible are in my spirit. We learned a long time ago to memorize the books of the Bible and memorize the content of the books. That's the most powerful weapon. Then, ladies and gentlemen, put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, 11 through 18 teach us about the full armor of God. When you get dressed, put on the full armor of God. Put on the, the belt of truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Take the sword of the Spirit. Put shoes that will speed the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith and then pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, those are weapons. And there are more weapons that God has given us. The weapon of praise. When the enemy comes upon you like a flood, Oh, you just start praising the Lord. Start praising God. When troubles hit you, praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You, you will subdue the enemy with your praise. The Bible says resist the devil and he will, he will flee from you. There are more weapons. We've got prayer. Oh, the power of prayer. The power of prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got these weapons of worship, praise, the word of God, prayer. We've got the M66. We've got God has equipped us. He has thoroughly, perfectly equipped us to be successful in this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, that's just the introduction. We want to thank God. We want to praise God. Welcome again to the worship uh, where I am, church, we call it the Back to Basics Online Church. You can come to God just as you are. Uh, uh, and if you don't have your webcam on, nobody online will see you got rollers in your hair. Uh, 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 if you didn't have time to wash up and brush your teeth, that's all right. Do that later on. Just come on. Let's worship God. God wants you just as you are. Praise God. Now, make sure if you have your web, webcam, you make sure you're dressed now. Be decent and, and in order. We just praise the Lord. This ministry is reaching the world, ladies and gentlemen. We're reaching the world. We've got a brother who comes on live from uh, Dubai, the nation of Dubai. We've got people who come on live from Kenya and parts of Africa, ladies and gentlemen. And we just thank God that God has chosen this ministry among other ministries 
to reach the world for Jesus. And you can help be a part of that by, by praying and, 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 and loving one another. Uh, walk in forgiveness. Walk in. Don't walk in bitterness. Unmute, uh, we w- want you to mute, mute. Yes, mute your phone. Mute your phone, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. We welcome our main man, Tyrone. Kirkpatrick from New York. Amen. Ooh, ooh, cool, cool kitty. Talking about the man from New York City, Tyrone Kirkpatrick. He's on with us. Praise God. We just bless God. Well, we're going to talk today about how to discern spirits. How to discern spirits. So we want you to listen carefully as we minister this word today, as God gives us a word. And this message today is going to change your life. This message is going to change your household. This message may change the atmosphere on your job. This message may change the atmosphere in your home. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a life-changing message. We're talking about a life changing message. I know my daughter Larray is on right now saying, Dad, slow down, slow down. Dad's fired up. Dad is fired up. Praise God, fired up. We'll slow down uh, in time, but we just praise God. I'm so excited about the Lord God, so excited about what God is doing, not only in my life and in Jackie's life and in our household. Praise God. We just thank God that he is doing great things uh, for us. Okay, Ryan, what is your request before we go further? Ryan, unmute your phone, please. Ryan, I see a request. Speak to us, Ryan. Hey, Pastor Carter. I don't don't have a request. You don't have a request? Not today, sir. Not yet. Okay. Okay, well, there was a request there, so I saw that, and um, okay, so, okay, let's go on. Can everybody still hear me? You still hear me, Ryan? Uh, Yes, sir. All right, praise God, praise God. All right, we thank God for you, Ryan, and your family. Praise God. It must be beautiful in Pennsylvania today. Anyway, let's go on, let's go on. Hallelujah. Praise God. I think I see David on from Dubai. I think David is on with us in Dubai. We want somebody today. I want someone today, before I go into my message, I want someone just to unmute your phone and and tell us how God has been good to you. I would like to say God's been good to me. I've been in prayer asking and seeking him on a major decision. And he made it very clear to me in what I was to do. And I'm very grateful for that. And I've also been praying in how to discern spirit. So this is another answer to prayer. And I just give God the praise and the glory. And I thank him for it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's our friend. Uh, in Colorado, praise God, amen, all across the nation, thank God, okay, and God answered her prayers, and we thank God for answering her prayers, and, and, and she's been wanting to hear about how to discern uh, spirits, we're going to teach on that today, praise God, uh, we ask one more person, is there one more person, one, one more person who would like to unmute your phone and, and yeah. tell how God has answered your prayers? Don't be shy, don't be shy, Hi. don't be shy. Pastor Carter? Praise Hi, this Zisla. Is Zisla. Hey, Zisla. Hi. Yeah, no, I wanted to give the update on my friend Israel Gonzalez. Yes. That he received the transplant of a liver and a kidney. Um, like in the April 30th, that's when he was accepted to be on the transplant list. And then three days later, he received the gift of the the transplant of both the liver and the kidney. And so on June 30th, that's when he was released from the hospital. And so now uh, he's recuperating at home with his mother. And so from that, they said in two weeks, they're going to check on him to see how he's doing and and to see when he'll be able to come back to work. But his father said maybe in uh, two months' time total. 
So he's recuperating, and we praise Lord Jesus Christ. We praise God for all all the wonderful things you know He's done for my friends, and, and so we're all very thankful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Zisla, for that update, and we praise God. We praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Zisla is one of our students, and many of our students are on from the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy, and um, uh, Pastor Paul comes online uh, one hour after we, we, we're off. He comes on at 12. Pastor Paul Bagley, the School of Prophecy, we've got many of our students on today, and they're growing, and we just praise God for them. And Zisla brought to our, our attention during a class one night uh, that her friend Israel uh, had uh, liver failure and kidney failure, and he was not eligible. They said he was not eligible for a transplant. We began to pray. Let's look at the power of prayer. We began to pray that night. And the next week, uh, Zizla came online with the class, and she said, uh, an amazing thing happened. They put uh, Israel on the top of the transplant list, and then a, a few days after he was put on the list, he had a liver and kidney transplant. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing impossible for God. And now this man is at home recuperating uh, in his mother's house. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing impossible. Whatever you're facing, nothing is impossible with God. And so we thank Zisla once again. Most of all, we thank God. We thank the Holy Spirit. What a mighty God we serve. Now let's look in the scriptures. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to take a look at five verses, the first five verses, and then we're going to take a look at how to discern spiritual gifts. The Bible says, follow after charity or love. So unmute your phones, everybody. I'm sorry. Mute, 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 mute. Mute your phones. There's a reverberation. Mute your phones, everybody. Thank you. Follow after charity. And this word charity means love. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. The Bible teaches us to desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. We're going to preach on tongues next week, the, the gift of tongues. I'm going to take three weeks and teach on the gift of tongues and, and, and how to use the gift of tongues and the power of the gift of tongues. That's starting next week. Verse 3, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. There are three reasons why God gives the gift of prophecy. There are more, but the main three are for edification, to build you up, for exhortation, to get you on the right track, and for comfort, to strengthen you. We all need strength. We all need healing. We all need comfort. Verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edify the church. When We'll learn more about this starting next week. When you speak in tongues, you're building yourself up. It's a communication between you and God. But he that prophesies, meaning he that speaks in his natural language what God has given him or her, that person builds up the church. When you prophesy, when you speak the word to others, you're helping to build up the church. Ladies and gentlemen, and the church means the body of Christ, the people who love the Lord. And all of them are not in buildings. All of them do not attend buildings. Thank God that many of you are coming online. Thank God that many of you are being ministered to through the recording, through the tape. Thank God for the church. We are the most powerful organism in the whole wide world. We can flip the whole world upside down if we all come together and trust in the Lord. Paul says in the fifth verse, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesies, in other words, greater is he that speaks the word of God in his own natural language, and not trying to be spiritual. Just speak what God gives you in your own natural language. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except he interpret, 
that the church may receive edifying. We'll continue more with this next week when we preach on the gift of tongues. I'm going to spend three weeks on the gift of tongues, and we're going to take this uh, tongue saying inside and out. We're going to look at what the scripture says. We're going to correct some things that need to be corrected. The Bible says all scriptures given is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. So you've got a lot of friends who need to learn about tongues, and you've got some folks you know who are in error. Uh, they just operate and do what they want to do. They think they've got the gift. And those people who think they, they have arrived because they speak in tongues, bring them on with you next week. Ask them to tune in next week to get some proper instruction on the gift of tongues. Well, we're going to look today at a, 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 an area that many Christians are ignorant of. Many Christians, I say many Christians, not that I'm any better than anybody else, but God has given me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him in this area. And we've been teaching this for years. So we're going to look at an area where many believers have, do not, have not had proper teaching. In other words, there are areas of the church where pastors don't even teach on, on this area of discerning gifts, discerning spiritual gifts. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many pastors who teach their congregation. There are no such things as demons. I don't even want to attend that church. If they don't believe in demons, I don't even want to attend that church. It must be a mess. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the church today, the church, the, the, the church, the blood-bought church that Jesus died for, that he declared at Caesarea Philippi in Matthew 16, 18, and 19. He said, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no reason under the sun why the church ought to be suffering defeat. There is no reason why there should be confusion and schisms and splits. And, 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 and uh, First Baptist, when the people in First Baptist get angry with the pastor, then they start Second Baptist. And then they get angry at the people at Second Baptist, they start Third Baptist. Ladies and gentlemen, in San Francisco, I've got a friend, he pastors the Fifth Baptist Church in San Francisco. Fifth Baptist Church. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no reason why there ought to be church called uh, Mount Zion. And then there's another church forms called Greater Mount Zion. And then uh, another church, the Superlative Mount Zion. Uh, 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 or uh, Then they rise up a church called Mount Zion Omniscient. Uh, omnipresent. Ladies and gentlemen, there ought to be no reason for competition in the church. Ought to be no reason for splits and schisms. If we all obey the word of God, if everybody obey the word of God, but you got some pastors out there preaching anything they want to preach, I call them punks in the pulpit. Yes, that's what I call them, punks in the pulpit. Amen. Uh, back in the world, we'll call them something else, but I ain't allowed to say that. I ain't going back there. But preachers need to stand on the word of God, stand on the word of God and preach the truth. Everything we need is contained in the M66. When you start preaching stuff that's outside of the Bible, your own theory, your own idea, your own dissertation, your own uh, 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 um, writings, your own uh, designs, when you get away from the Bible and start preaching what is on your mind or in your heart, ladies and gentlemen, that is dangerous. And many people are sitting under pastors who preach whatever they preach. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we've got pastors who select what they preach. They go through, they select, they thumb through their sermons on Saturday night. Mm, they flip a sermon. Or some might just... Uh, uh, pick up a handful of sermons and drop them on the floor, and the one that lands on top, that's what they're going to preach on Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, we need pastors who will seek the Lord, who will seek the Lord, who ask the Holy Ghost, what shall I preach to the people today? We need pastors who will start on Monday and throughout the week. They're seeking God. They're in God's face. They're calling on the Lord. Lord, what is it you would like to say to your people? But no, 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 all contraire. Here's what many 
many pastors do. They look through their box of sermons or their file or download their file, and they pick something that they think will fit in what's going on on the church on Sunday. Mute your phones, please. Mute your phones. This is a powerful message. Mute your phones. They, want, they will pick, choose something that's going to fit in with the day. If it's Women's Day, they're going to preach something that deals with elevating women. If it's uh, Usher's Day, they're going to preach something about standing in the, in, 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 in the, in the presence of God. They're going to pull, pull something to equate with whatever day they have outlined on the ca- calendar. Many pastors have outlined things on the calendar, and then they pick sermons or choose scriptures that are going to match that uh, outline. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm believing God that God is going to cause pastors to seek his face even before they set up their calendar for the year, seek the Lord. I, I, I believe that God wants to take the lead. Let the Holy Spirit lead. Ladies and gentlemen, let the Holy Spirit lead. And you, as a believer, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You might have things on your calendar, but you might have to adjust your calendar to let the Holy Spirit lead. When we let the Holy Spirit Spirit, lead us. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go wrong. So praise God. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. Mute your phones. Star six. Star six. That's how you do that. Star six. There's an interference. I don't like this interference. Mute your phone, please. Be obedient. Star six. And you have muted. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Now, what is discerning spirits? How do you discern spirits? Well, Pastor, what do you mean by discern? Discern means to distinguish. Discernment means to, to identify. Uh, uh, like right now, there's a spirit trying to interrupt this service, and I've already asked you three times to mute your phone, but somebody's being disobedient. So I bind that spirit of disobedience right now, wherever you are, whoever you are. If you're online with us and your phone is open, I'm asking you for the fourth time to mute your phone. Otherwise, I might have to just shut everybody down, and I don't want to do that. Satan would love for me to uh, pick you out and call your name and tell you, uh, uh, tell everybody who you are, but you just be obedient. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Lord, cause people to be obedient, Lord. Be obedient. If you don't want to obey, why are you coming online? We don't have time to play with you, folks. We're talking about life-changing ministry. We are talking about life-changing ministry. And I say this in love, but I use the authority of the name of Jesus, and I command that whoever has your phone open, shut it down so that you will not interrupt the flow. People all over the world want to hear this recording. People are waiting to get the recording of this message. So while you're uh, 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 letting inter- interference come through your phone because you've been disobedient, you won't unlock your phone. You won't shut your phone down. It's press the star button and press uh, pound, and you will... Uh, star six, star six, star six, and you're muted. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I never have to do that again. We've just wasted a whole minute because somebody's been disobedient. Well, praise God. Pastor Carl, you tough. Yes, I'm a man set under authority. God has given us this ministry. God wants people's lives to be changed. And you cannot change people's lives if somebody is, is being disobedient. So come on, let's be obedient. Now, I love you all. Let's get on with it. Why is it so important to discern spirits? Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of people who call me or email me or text me with issues and problems. I see it all over Facebook. People are plagued by problems, troubles. Things are happening in your home. You can't explain it. Some of you are seeing stuff. You can't explain it. Uh, 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 Last week I talked with a family. Uh, One of the family members was seeing uh, 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 demons, and 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 uh, and uh, and not being able to handle it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, some of you are hearing voices, and you don't know if it's the voice of God or whose voice. And so, when you hear a voice, and you don't know whose voice it is, you need to discern that spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a, a finite world, a real world, a physical world, but we're also in a spiritual world, ladies and gentlemen. On this earth, which is called the first atmosphere, there's a war going on on the earth between God 
and the devil. And demonic spirits have been unleashed all over the earth, ladies and gentlemen. Satan has released demonic spirits all over the earth. I wish you would uh, call me and get a copy of my book, The Giants Are Back. You'll see more into this. Satan has demon spirits all over the earth. Satan has organized demonic spirits. He has demons controlling every nation of the world. We're talking about Satan's heavy hitters. That's why the Bible says don't get be angry at your neighbor. Don't be angry at people. Don't fight people. You're uh, our enemies are not people. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Ladies and gentlemen, the troubles you're encountering, the troubles I am encountering are not because of people. People are not our enemy. No, no. Putin is not our enemy. No, no, no. Uh, uh, the president of Germany is not our enemy. No, no. The president of Afghanistan is not our enemy. No, the leaders in, in certain nations are not our enemies. Our enemy is Satan, and he's organized. He is so organized, ladies and gentlemen, and he has demon spirits controlling, listen to this, every nation. He has demons controlling continents. He has demons controlling every region in every nation. For example, when you look at San Francisco, it is a seedbed for homosexuality, the gay lifestyle, lesbianism. When you look at Chicago, all the murders going on in Chicago. When you look at Philly, when you look at Atlanta, Georgia, you got a lot of robbings and killings going on here in Atlanta. You may wonder, well, why? Why is this? Because Satan has demons in territorial positions and they make sure that these types of activities are in operation when there is a spirit there's also a manifest action ladies and gentlemen where there is a spirit there's also a manifest uh, 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 sensitivity a manifest uh, feeling uh, uh, symptoms spirits bring symptoms you can tell the symptoms of a spirit controlled area by what are the symptoms of that area if everybody is going to San Francisco and a lot of people in San Francisco are, 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 are reaching out to the gays and lesbians or or if Chicago is a center of same-sex marriage or if Indiana is a center of, of uh, 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 churches that have men pastors and the first lady is a man or uh, South Carolina is the center where churches have women pastors and the first lady is is a lady ladies and gentlemen that means Satan has has really fine-tuned his attacks he's regional he's territorial then let's let's bring it even closer to home in your house if you're having trouble sleeping at night, at night, you're dreaming dreams. You're 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 uh, seeing demon spirits. Demons are attacking you in your sleep. You're waking up in a cold sweat. You don't know what's going on. Some of you are afraid to go to sleep at night. You've got the night light on. You've got the kitchen light on. The dining room light on. You've got the outside lights on. You've got the bathroom light on. You've got light. Ladies and gentlemen, nighttime is the right time to go to sleep. But a lot of you can't go to sleep because you are oppressed. Uh, the moment you lay down, you get these various thoughts in your head. Uh, some, some of you or workaholics. You've got to be busy. you got to be busy. It's like Mary and Martha. Mary said at the feet of Jesus why Martha kept on working. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are demonic spirits. If you can't shut yourself down uh, by 11 o'clock p.m., if you can't shut yourself down at 2 o'clock in the morning, something is wrong. It's an indication that demonic spirits are oppressing you. And here we go in the church. We've got all these pastors. I call them punks in the pulpit. They don't want to preach about it. They don't even recognize it. They're in denial. And they, uh, they, a lot of them hate preachers like me who preach uh, deliverance, who, who, who preach to expose the demons, who preach the whole gospel, who believe the word of God. Many of them hate uh, 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 many, thus, those of us who are filled with the Holy Ghost and are learning how to subdue the demonic spirits. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got children. 
uh, who, who have nightmares. We've got children afraid to go to sleep. We've got children who uh, see stuff in, in uh, their sleep. When I was a little child, uh, I had nobody to teach me spiritual things. My mom and dad didn't know. They were ignorant. They just did not know. They were good parents, but they were ignorant of spiritual things. I would wake up many nights having nightmares, nightmares, screaming, and, and uh, I slept in the same bed with two of my brothers, and, and they used to freak them out. Uh, also, uh, I had a bedwetting problem. I wet the bed for a long time when I was a child. They had no way to take authority over that. Doctors couldn't do anything. Uh, doctors Doctors would say, put him on this pill, put him on. But pills do not deliver it, ladies and gentlemen. Pills are not the answer. I'm not saying doctors are not right, but pills cannot deal with demonic spirits. You can't fight demons with pills. I wonder if I can get a witness. You can't fight demons with pills with pills. You can't fight demons with alcohol. You can't fight. You can smoke cannabis. You can snort co co cocaine. Cocaine. You can sn uh, snort cocaine. You can uh, 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 smoke ganji. But ganji is a demon. We got many people using demons to fight demons. You can't sleep at night. Well, that's a demon of restlessness. That's a demon called insomnia. Uh, 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 that's a demon uh, that's trying to uh, Disrupt your equilibrium. The Bible says we all ought to have sweet sleep. He's like he's given sleep to his servants. Praise God. But many people cannot sleep. And so we take a pill to sleep. And then that pill causes nightmares. And then, then that pill causes terror tremens. And then many people freak out with pills and grass and, and smoke and, 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 and cocaine or or. or uh, ambioids or whatever uh, they are. Uh, Lorraine, you know more about that, those medicines, because you're a nurse. Um, I don't know all the names, but ladies and gentlemen, we cannot fight the demons with our own knowledge. Uh, Grandmom's wisdom ain't going to do any good when it comes to fighting demons. Uncle Willie's uh, bless bones. Uh, well, call Uncle Willie down in Georgia. Let him shake the bones and, and give me what I ought to do. Uh, have somebody concoct uh, something I can drink for this. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, and witchcraft is a demon. There's only one way to deal with demons, ladies and gentlemen, and that's with the word of God. With the word of God. When Jesus was attacked, when the Jesus was attacked uh, by the demons, he spoke the word of God. He says, Satan, it is written. And ladies and gentlemen, you need to read your Bible. I need to read my Bible. More than that, we've got to believe the Bible. Then, ladies and gentlemen, every one of us, every one of us, whether your church preaches it or not, every one of us needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It sickens my sanctified soul to know of the many pastors who don't even teach their people about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They don't believe in it. Uh, 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 I've even had pastors tell me, don't come to me with that mess. I don't want that Holy Ghost mess. That's a sad pastor. That's a sad excuse for a man or woman of God. They don't want the Holy Ghost. How can you live without the Holy Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit who breaks the yoke. He's the one who sets free. He destroys the yoke. He delivers. And so what we have, ladies and gentlemen, we have people, you can't sleep at night, your children can't sleep at night, they're seeing things, they're hearing voices in your house, and you don't know what to do about it. You go to your pastor, and many pastors don't know what to do about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you what to do about it, hallelujah, because we've had experience in this. You call on the name of the Lord, if you can't sleep at night, and, and you're hearing voices, or your children are seeing things, then you need to go in your house and throughout your house with some olive oil, anoint every room. Uh, Terry, anoint every room in your house. Speak the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command that every demon leave this place. You need to activate the word of God. Matthew 18, 19. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But if you're too timid to open your mouth and bind those demons, you've got to speak to them and bind them by the authority. 
authority of the name of Jesus. You've got to tell devil, the devil. You go into your child's bedroom and you speak in that bedroom. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I bind you now by the authority of the name of Jesus. I command that you take your hand off my child. I command that you take your hand off my children. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if you're a woman and your husband's cheating on you and you don't know what to do, ladies and gentlemen, then you're, here's what to do. You get some olive oil, you get some olive oil, and go and put a drop of olive oil under his pillow and speak these words. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I bind that spirit of adultery. I bind that spirit of concupiscence. I bind that lust spirit. In the name of Jesus, and I command, you've got to speak it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be timid. Don't be a punk. Speak it. I command that you take your hands off my husband. I command that you release him. Then you ask God, God, in the name of Jesus, restore my marriage. If your wife is cheating on you, you can do the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. You speak the word of God. You speak the word of God. You bind that demon of adultery. You bind that lust spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about something that works. And then you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill this house. Fill this presence. And then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, call me if you need some help. Uh, set up an appointment with me. I'll teach you how to build a hedge of thorns around your husband. If your husband ain't doing right, yes, man, if you ain't doing right, uh, 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 you, you'll get set free. You keep listening to this message, you'll get set free. And if your wife is listening, tell her to listen up. Ladies and gentlemen, if your husband is cheating on you, and you're doing all you can, you're staying home, you're crying, you're grumbling, you're complaining, you're, you're going crazy, you can't sleep. He comes in smelling like some other woman, and he goes right to sleep. He doesn't even kiss you goodnight, doesn't even speak to you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take some action, and God will give you the action. Ladies and gentlemen, call me for a personal appointment. I'll be glad to share this with you, and I'll help you, and I'll show you how the Holy Ghost can get your house free. You build a hedge of thorns around him. Ladies and gentlemen, if your husband is out there robbing 7-Eleven stores or robbing Kroger's or robbing a, a service stations, and you know he ain't working, but he's got a whole lot of money, if you're a uh, girlfriend or your boyfriend is selling drugs, don't have a job, but got a whole lot of money, and you want to see an end to it. If your children ain't doing right, you can build a hedge of thorns around them, ladies and gentlemen. Based on Hosea chapter 2, verse 6, you ask God to build a hedge of thorns around them, and then you just leave it alone. And you watch how they come running to Jesus. You watch how they come running to Jesus. You watch how your marriage will be renewed. Watch how your household will be set free. We're talking about discerning of spirits. Well, Pastor Card, you've been doing a whole lot of talking, but how can we tell what, what demons are active in, in our lives? <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, you look at the symptoms. You look at the symptoms. Ladies and gentlemen, if, 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 if there's someone on your job always angry, always angry with you, cussing and angry, then you're dealing with the demon of anger. You're dealing with a demon of bitterness. You're dealing with a demon of resentment. Whatever the uh, symptom is, you name that demon by that symptom, and then you bind that demon. You have the authority given to you by God to bind every demon power. Well, prove that by Scripture, Pastor Carter. Yes, Matthew 18, 18 and 19. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you going to just sit there and watch these things happen? You're going to watch your kids go down the tube? You're going to watch your husband and your marriage go down the drain? Or are you going to take a stand, put on the full armor of God, start studying your word of God, pray in the spirit, begin worshiping God, and then ask God to activate his plan for deliverance. Ask God, and then you speak to that situation. You speak to that devil. Ladies and gentlemen, if your husband beats on you, if he beats on you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, 
getting a gun ain't going to do him any good. Uh, blowing him away is only going to waste his life and put you in prison for life. No, 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 no. There's a better way. If he beats on you, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to rise up, put the full arm of God on, and let the Holy Ghost rise up in you like rivers of living water. If your husband is beating on you and you're tired of it, give me a call. We'll set up an appointment between you and me, and, and, and God will give you the answer how to get him delivered. He'll be crawling at your feet. He'll bring you flowers every Friday. He'll take you to dinner. He'll stop cheating. He'll, he'll respect you. He'll honor you. He'll repent. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about discerning the spirits. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got a uh, 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 somebody in your household keeps gambling, can't stop gambling, can't stop going to the casino, uh, losing all the money. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a de game, demon of gambling. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to bind that demon by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus. You've got to open your mouth and bind it. Nobody else is going to do that for you. You've got to open your mouth and bind that spirit. And then, then. Ask God to move in that situation. And then when God moves, you let the Lord have his way. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not advocate. I never did advocate, and I won't advocate. I see so many women, their husband beat on them or their boyfriends beat on them. Then they have the boyfriend arrested, and then uh, uh, the boyfriend's in jail, and he starts texting you and borrows somebody's cell phone and starts telling you how, how much he loves you. you got a black eye, a bloody nose, a broken nose, one eyeball hanging out, ear hung on by a paper clip. Ladies and gentlemen, and, 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 and I've seen some, pardon me, I've seen some pretty dumb women. I've seen some pretty dumb women in my life. What do they do? They go right down and bail him out. And, and despite all his... Uh, lying, uh, that, that, that lying spirits in operation, that, that uh, destructive spirits in operation, that spirit of murder is in operation, and you bail him out, and he does it again. He does it again. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never been an advocate of bailing somebody out who got in trouble. It, once you warn them, you raise your children to do right. My kids will tell you, hey, Ray's on here. Wes is on here. They will tell you. I told them, you got one opportunity. You got one chance. But you repeat it, I will not bail you out. And if, if that one chance was something you knew not to do and you knew better, but you went on anyway with your hard head itself, then you stay in jail. You pay the price. Ladies and gentlemen, this is tough love. Well, how can you be a Christian? How can you love your kids when you let them stay in jail? Ladies and gentlemen, some of the kids need to stay in jail. Some of these kids in Atlanta carrying guns, some of the kids in Chester, some of the kids in Philly, some of the kids in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, some of the kids in, in Los Angeles and San Francisco, Chicago, carrying guns, just shooting up everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, they ought to be locked up, ladies and gentlemen. I do not advocate bailing out somebody who has a spirit of murder. I do not advocate uh, bailing someone else who has a lying spirit and it is bent on uh, 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 adversity. Ladies and gentlemen, you warn them with the word of God, and if they won't take the warning, then you ought to wash your hands off. And sometimes it takes prison. It takes prison to deliver them. It takes prison. You let some of these hard uh, tough, m macho guys who like, beat, who like to beat up on women, who like to beat up on their mothers and grandmothers. You let them get in prison and don't bail them out. Let them stay. Let them stay. The guys in prison will fix them. They got the cure for them. The guys in prison will fix them. And when they, if they get out of prison, they'll be so glad to be free. They'll walk right. They'll call on the name of the Lord. You let some of these uh, 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 sexual perverts in prison get to them, and, and, and before long they'll be crying out for mercy, and then they're at a place where God can deal with them. God's got to bring a lot of us to a place of mercy where he can deal with us. Ladies and gentlemen, how do we discern the spirits? We discern the spirits not by our own wisdom, not by our own knowledge, not by our own education, not by what we think, not what mama thinks, not what grandmama thinks, but you've got to seek the Lord. And you ask the Lord, Lord, what is this demon that has attacked my family? What is this demon that has attacked uh, my children that they can't sleep? What is this demon that causes confusion in my household? And ladies and gentlemen, when you quiet yourself before the Lord 
and you call on him in prayer and ask him, Lord, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. And just wait on the Lord. Just wait on him. He will reveal to you. God will speak to you. He will show you what that spirit is that has come to destroy your household. Ladies and gentlemen, don't play with demons. They only have a three-pronged program. They are come to kill, rob, or destroy. They do not come to mean you any good. They do not come to mean you any good. They dress up and look good, but they don't mean you any good. And it's up to you to cut them down. The Bible says, resist the devil, he shall flee from you. Well, you can't fight what you can't see. You can't fight what you don't know. And so that is why we ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God has given us the victory, ladies and gentlemen. He's given us all that we need. Ask the Lord. Lord, what is, and if you've got a problem and you can't, don't even understand yourself, if you don't even trust yourself around somebody's money or somebody's possession, you've got a, a theft spirit. You've got a stealing spirit. You, you've, got, you've got a demon in you, and you can shut yourself down. You can shut that demon down. You can cast that demon out of yourself. We're talking about self-deliverance. Give me a call. Set up an appointment. These things, we don't, we're not charging you anything. God has given this to me freely. I'll give it to you freely. And, and uh, set up an appointment. We'll talk on a one-on-one. -on -one. No one needs to know your business. And watch what the Lord will do. We're talking about drawing nigh unto the Lord. We're talking about Jesus who paid the price on Calvary for everything we need. He bought our redemption. He set us free. And he said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. But we know that Satan uh, hates that, and Satan is here to disrupt. He, he's, a, he's a counterfeiter. He's a cloner. He wants to duplicate, imitate what God is doing. And Satan uh, always works in contrary to the word of God. You've got to learn how to discern. You've got to learn how to discern it, whether it's the Wiccans or the Rosicranians or the witches. You've got to stay away from witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, many churches are verging on witchcraft. Many pastors practice witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to discern the truth. I thank God for this online church. I thank God for the anointing. Thank God that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Yes, you can be free. You can be free. You can sleep at night. Ladies and gentlemen, you can sleep at night. If you're having trouble sleeping, read Psalm 91 every night before you go to sleep. Read Psalm 91. If your children can't sleep, read Psalm 91 to them. Get the New International Version. Get the uh, 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 Modern English Versions for the little kids. Read Psalm 91 for them, to them. Memorize it for yourself. If you're having trouble sleeping, Start memorizing and repeating at night, at bedtime. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. And just memorize, just quote it out loud, and watch the peace of the Lord come upon you. And watch the peace of the Lord. You'll, you'll wake up, remember, you'll wake up, you'll sleep so sweetly, you'll wake up saying, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. He said, no, no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. Ladies and gentlemen, God has the way to shut down the demons. We have got to apply his way. We have got to seek this way. You must be born again, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not born again, you're a victim. You're open to all kinds of satanic attack. And once you get born again, you need to stay in the presence of the Lord. Don't flirt with witchcraft. Don't flirt with adultery. Don't flirt with lust. Don't flirt with stealing. Don't be greedy for money. Keep your focus on the Lord. And if something is off base, you can ask the Lord, God, discern, distinguish to me what is going on. And God will give you, ladies and gentlemen, a word of knowledge. He will tell you what's going on. And when he gives you the word of knowledge, ask him, God, give me a word of wisdom. Show me 
what to do about this situation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, why every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, how to activate them. We will continue next week. Uh, with the gift of tongues, uh, we're going to have a three-week series on the gift of tongues. Tongues has caused so much confusion in the church. We're going to take our time, let the Lord reveal to us. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we close out, I want you to stay online. I want you to stay online because after we close out the message, we're going to have some deliverance. We're going to have some prayer. We're going to pray for your situation. So if you've got a situation you need help with, Praise God. We're going to pray for that situation. We're going to pray. Uh, we're going to pray for those who are listening to the recording all over the world. No matter what your situation is, we're going to believe God. And if you uh, want, want personal ministry, you contact me. Give me a call, 404-205-1101, 404 205 1101, or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or text me, or on Twitter at BTBMIN. Ladies and gentlemen, we are seeking the Lord. God's got the answer to your problem. You see, God wants you to be free. Jesus died to set us free. He's already paid the price. Satan is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's the prince of the power of the air. Satan is the ruler of this world system. Satan's all in the government. That's why you can't even trust anybody in the government nowadays. Uh, most, of them are, most of them are liars. You can't trust. You've got to discern. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it's gotten to the place where you can't even trust the teacher of your child in school. You can't even trust your husband sometimes. You can't even trust your wife because Satan is looking for openings. You can't even trust many pastors. You can't even trust the person you're sitting next to in church. Many people are in church but are not born again. Many are stubborn and rebellious and don't yield to the Holy Spirit. But you, re you submit to the Holy Spirit. You submit to the Holy Spirit and watch God. Watch God. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. Praise God. And now we're going to stop the recording, but we're going to spend uh, some time. If you're willing to spend time with me, we're going to pray uh, about people's situations and may God bless you. Father God, we thank you and bless you and honor you and praise you. Thank you for this message. Lord, there's so much uh, more in this area of how to discern the spirits, but I pray that you'll give your people um, the, the time to study the scriptures and quiet themselves before you, humble themselves before you, talk to you, listen to the Holy Spirit, learn God as you give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you and help them to activate your solution to their problem. Deliver the people and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Shut Satan down, Lord God. We resist him in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, 